<laughs> we sure hope. Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Today, we have the Stoll family, and they are going to make just in time for the holidays healthy and delicious desserts, an apple cobbler and a blueberry cobbler. Please welcome them to the show. I love when families cook together. Yes. Hi, I'm Kristen. This is my daughter, Faith. She's our youngest. We have six children here on our property. Our oldest is married and has three beautiful grandchildren. They live just down the lane from us. And we are coming live to you from Tennessee. Um, and we exactly what Pat Chef said, we are a family that cooks together. We love to cook together. We love to be in the kitchen making fun recipes. And we, we like to create food that is simple and repeatable <laughs> and healthy. I love and that simple and repeatable. That's a great, I've never heard of it that way, but that is, that's a really great way to put it. Yeah, we're, we, we like to try to give people recipes that are typically things they have in the kitchen already, and then they can adjust and make their own. Nice. So, and they're all of our recipes, typically children friendly for obvious reasons. <laughs> that's great. Cause I was talking to Faith right before the show while you were grabbing your book and she says she loves to cook. And that's so cool that she's only 10 and she's already cooking. Oh my <laughs> Faith. I had no choice. Faith has been in the kitchen um, since she's about one and 18 months. And so I had to figure out how to teach her how to cut with a knife and I would give her little butter knives. And, <laughs> and so when she was like five, she'd be using a, a, a regular knife cutting and people would be quite nervous watching. I'm like, she's fine. She's been in the kitchen a long time. And so, and she runs the kitchen. She's amazing. You know, I think, I, I think it's that the people that love to cook know how to cook. They learned how to cook. And I think the people today say, well, I hate to cook. It's because they never learn. And I learned when I was young too. And that's why I still love it today. Just like exercise. If you don't do it, you're not going to love it. Absolutely. And my mom was the same way. She had us in the kitchen all the time. She always made kitchen the, the kitchen fun. You know, she's always letting us mess it up and create. And she always had, she always made that experience in the kitchen, a family affair. And so I always appreciate that about her. Well, with six kids, you probably had to cook a lot and still do, I imagine. Oh my. Yeah. <laughs> I so we say you can always find me in the kitchen <laughs> always yeah. you know and now they're a little older they're cooking for themselves so I, I I don't need to be in the kitchen as much and then they will make food for us and make dinner so that's been nice but yes we were always in the kitchen constantly yeah. Just in case <laughs> people don't know who's your dad Faith um Scott Stoll yeah but but who is he in the world I mean yes he's a very nice man named Scott Stoll but I mean <laughs> <laughs> he's just your dad, isn't he? <laughs> he's the best dad in the whole world. <laughs> right. But yes, who, well, how would you describe him? <laughs> you don't know? Yeah. Well, he's a superstar in the plant-based world. He's one of the plant-based doctors. He's the founder of the Plantrician Conference, and he's just awesome. And he's been on the show before. But I mean, it's not a very common name, but just in case I wanted people to make the connection. Yes, God is amazing. He, I always feel like he's been undercover for a long time and he is starting to really um, come to the forefront of uh, plant-based worlds and it's exciting. There's a lot of things coming in 2022 and actually has a book coming out this week that is going to be an amazing inspirational book on testimonies and stories of people whose lives have been changed by a plant-based world. He never told me he should be on the show this week promoting it. What's it called? It's called reverse. It's called hope. It's re, it's reversal hope. And so it's basically a book all about uh, food uh, diseases that have been reversed through plant based nutrition. So disease reversal hope. That is amazing. I'm going to contact him. Maybe it's not too late to get him on. But speaking of books, why don't you show your book and tell us a little bit about it? Okay. Yeah. So this is um, this is our little cookbook. It's actually getting a facelift this next year um, because what we have found is that um, so can we the what we have found is we have, well, our cookbook was designed, let me just turn around, um, years and years ago when we started this journey going back 18 years ago, um, Scott was at the time in practice and um, found through just research and research that um, food reverses disease. And so we were working on creating recipes at home. And he would call me from home saying, 
what did you make again last night? And so he would write it down on his little prescription pad and give people recipes. And so this is kind of a collection of recipes that we were making back then we've added and subtracted. And, um, and so we created, you know, on the back, um, a, a plate and how to build your plate. And so the tabs, um, correlate with the colors on the plate. And so, um, this year we're kind of changing a little bit so we can put on Amazon so it can, um, they can do demand on printing because I have to use a printer, a special printer for these cookbooks. Um, so yeah, we're going to see, you're going to see this like, coming out in the new year with, with a little face left, but the same pictures, but just designed just a little bit, but it's wonderful. It has great, um, children tested, um, recipes and recipes that Scott's been using in his practice for years and years. That's fantastic. How long ago did you write the book? Um, so that would have, that came out, well, this is like a third edition. So, but the first one came out, I think 14 years ago. So we started doing health immersions for whole foods. Um, well, 12 years ago. So about, yeah, about 14 years ago, we started doing that, uh, the cookbook. Great. Were you guys always plant-based and did you raise all your kids that way? Good question, um, Jeff. I well, Scott and I um, were married 26 years ago, and we um, were not plant based when we were married. Um, I tried to implement more um, vegetarian meals at the time because of just some books I was reading, and it was a little difficult for Scott at the time to think about changing. Um, from just a standard American diet who's used to certain foods, obviously, and growing up um, in a standard American diet. But then when he started practicing medicine 19 years ago um, in his practice, he started seeing people coming in to his practice that were not getting better and they were falling apart. And Scott, as when you, you know him, he has He's a, he has a heart of mercy and he didn't want to just put band-aids on people. He wanted to make them better. So it started a journey of researching. And I never forget one day we we're sitting there after he had researched thousands and thousands of articles. And, and I had, we had a China study and we had Dr. Furman's book, um, eat to live. And I said, which one do you want? Cause he's going on a trip. He goes, I'll take the China study. And I said, okay, I'll take Dr. Furman's. And we both read him while he was away. And we said, okay. We know what we need to do. And so then we started transitioning over to a plant-based diet um, 19 years ago. Well, that's pretty good. So that evolved. means that most of your kids probably were raised that way. They, they basically all were. Our, our oldest son was four or five when it started, we started changing. I mean, where we are now, to where we were then is completely different. It's gotten better and better and more refined and pure. Um, just with the research and knowledge that we've gained. But yeah, they have, and our grandchildren are all plant-based as well. And um, they're, I think they are very healthy looking. My sons are robust and strong and, and um, they, they're amazing. They're very healthy. We're very thankful. Well, I didn't know. I just assumed you guys always were, but it seems like you were the one that kind of, you know, got it going. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. Scott does talk about every once in a while, but he is so teachable. He is so teachable and he always listens and wants to be better himself. So it's like, we, we've been on this journey together. It's been so fun. We love it. You like eating plants, Faith? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fantastic. Any of your kids ever rebelled at all? Like I know at one point, Heather McDougal, Dr. McDougal's daughter went to McDonald's, didn't feel very good after she did it. Oh, yeah. Physically, she didn't feel good. Oh, yes, oh, definitely. Um, it's funny because what has happened is not that they went to rebel, but now that they have their own freedom of driving and going out with friends, the big thing is going to Chick-fil-A and going to these places. And so they would go along and, you know, there's that pressure. Well, what do we get? And so they would, you know, try something here and there. Same thing. And I remember one time our son, one son got, I mean, really ill, extremely ill when he came home after doing that. And then we're like, okay, what, you know, I don't think you're going to do that again. So he's, so now when they go, they get salads, but yeah, it, that's uh it's interesting how the body just rejects what <laughs> rejects that kind of food because they're not used to eating it. Absolutely. Uh, do you, did you growing up faith have any friends that also ate this way? And did any of them like 
say anything about it? Um, no, not really. Mm -mm, not very many friends yeah. that are plant based. Um, I think you have friends that um, are real interested in eating well, um, but we have very few friends that are 100% um, plant-based, um, but some that are very teachable and adaptable and have a heart to eat well. And so, um, but they, they've never pressured you no. to eat. They're, they always, always adjust to her when she comes over. Very That's thoughtful. nice. That's nice. What's your favorite yeah. food, Faith? What's your favorite food to eat? Um, you have next to pineapple. Um, you know, what are you upset? I don't know. You do too. <laughs> what's what's your, your favorite thing that mom, how about this? How about what's your favorite thing from mom's cookbook or that mom makes? Uh, I was thinking about the thing we just made for the Dunham's. You love that. Oh, yeah. What is it called? Vegetable curry. Vegetable curry. Nice. Nice. Well, what are you guys going to make for us today? Um, blueberry cobbler and apple <laughs> cobbler. <laughs> She's nervous. You're okay. Yeah, you're adorable. Don't worry about it. People, people love having younger ones on this show. I always, cobbler means the stuff is on top, whereas pie, it's on the bottom, right? Yeah. That's right. Exactly. Or you can call it a crisp or we always wind up saying a cobbler, although it's, I find that every family, it's always a little bit different, right? It looks different in every single family. Um, but yes, I would agree. All the topping was on top as opposed to being on the bottom. Nice. And, well, and, and what you usually find in, in many of the recipes, there's a lot of brown sugar, there's a lot of flour and butter, um, salt. And so we've kind of eliminated all that and came up with our own creation, which we really love and we have found that other people have enjoyed as well that aren't plant-based in our lives. Yum. So what do we need? I know you were kind enough to give the recipes and I'm going to put them in the show notes very soon. Yeah. yeah. So what you're going to need is a variety of apples. I love to use Honeycrisp or Pink Lady um, apples. Um, and I just, I tend to mix them up and so just this for fun because it gives different tastes. And for some people, um, you may enjoy taking the skin off. We like the skin off. So we like, why get, why get rid of that good nutrient? So we keep it on. And so when we cut up our apples, we keep our skin on. And so we need about eight apples for um, about a nine. Um, what is this one? A nine by, yeah, I think we have, well, I guess it depends what, whatever you have, the thickness of your, what you want the thickness of your apple crisp to be is going to be determined on how many apples you want, but we typically use eight by nine by 11 um, pie shell. And then you're going to need um, cinnamon. You're going to need some kind of starch. We like to use this organic tapioca starch. That's what we usually have in our kitchen or arrowroot. And um, this, and then the rest is kind of optional. Um, we love to use an apple cider um, syrup. It all is this apple cider that's been cooked down. And if you can't find that, then we you can use like a date um, paste or a date syrup. Um, and all that is is just fresh dates um, that has been that you can either take fresh dates, put in a Vitamix of a little water, spin it until you have a date paste, or you can purchase, which we have here, um, organic date syrup. Is now, that my date lady? Yes. I love that company. I have a discount code. Use my name next time. Get 10% off. I love her product. Yeah, I will. I know. I love that product too. I really enjoy um, using that so much. We always have that in hand. And then if you don't have the apple cider syrup, which is just amazing, you find that on, on Amazon as well. You can just use little apple cider, organic apple cider is what we had. And then the other thing that we really enjoy using are date crystals on all it is, is dehydrated dates. That's all that is. And so these are just fabulous for the apple crisp um, or even on oatmeal. We love to make um, banana, we call banana split smoothies in the morning, where we just have bananas and, and smoothie and we put the date crystals on top. They're so good. So I highly recommend that. And so that's for the filling. And so what we have done is we use our handy dinner apple slicer. If you do not have one of these, it's fabulous. And all you, um, do is you put your apple on top and um, 
and push it down. And then it makes into these beautiful wedges. It really cuts out so much time if you have the time. If not, a good old knife will do. And so mix all your apples in a bowl. And then I have the, the, uh, the um, amounts on the recipe, but what Faith will just do, she's just gonna sprinkle the apples with um, cinnamon. Let me see, go on this side. And she's gonna give a good dusting. I'm gonna move this out of the way. A cinnamon, and again, that depends on how much cinnamon you like. We love cinnamon. So love cinnamon. Love the taste, uh, taste of cinnamon. You have a, so you have a favorite it. kind of cinnamon? I know they have the cassia, the Saigon, the Vietnamese. There's so many different kinds. I really like the. This is this um, the Saigon. I love this kind. I just I just love the robust taste of that one. Um, yeah, that sounds good. And then you can just mix that. Was your yeah. apple slicer the kind that makes eight slices or 16 slices? Mine is 16. Yeah, I love that one better because it's yeah. it smaller. They make them smaller slices. I have the other one, but it's, but then I wind up cutting them thinner, you know? So I prefer that. And then what we're going to do is while she's mixing that, I'm going to add some starch to that. And that's going to help, um, you know, so it's not so watery once this comes out of the oven. So she's going to mix that. I can help you if you need help. You can just get in there. And if you don't want to even use that, you can use your hands. That needs to be easier. And so she's going to mix that together. And um, it smells so good. I wish you could smell it. But as the cinnamon, as it mixes with apples, it's just so amazing. And the apples right now are really amazing. They're so good. They're so tart and sweet same time. And so why, she, why she's putting that together is it's getting incorporated and we're seeing some of the starch go away. It's getting absorbed up by the apples. And then I will add the apple uh, cider syrup to this. And I'm, I'm putting in about two tablespoons or so, two or three tablespoons. And then she's going to mix that up. And then I'm going to add um, about a tablespoon of the date crystals. That. And that these will the date crystals crystals will melt once they're cooked. Um, oh, here it is. I have seen. You know, I live near. I live in the desert, so we have like the India is the date capital of the United States, and I have oh. seen date crystals. I've just never known what to do with them before. Oh, they're so they're really good on a, just topping. Like I said, oatmeal, or if you're making a smoothie bowl. You know, the smoothie bowls in the morning. It's so great to just put a topping on there. We love to make. Um, just banana ice cream. You know, when you take frozen bananas, we take apples, I mean, bananas, peel them, freeze them, and then turn them into an ice cream. And then we'll sprinkle that on top of our um, sprinkle. Sprinkle the, <laughs> sprinkle the date, <laughs> paint, yeah. date crystals on top. Oh, it's so nice. It adds a nice little crunch to it. Yeah. I've never heard of apple cider syrup. Like what else can you do with it? Oh, apple cider syrup? Well, you can put it in, um, you can add it to your, just up. We'd love to take apple cider and warm it up and on the stove and you can um, add that to your apple cider you can add it to tea you can put an apple pies you can what do they say let me see what else oh here but right, we're not going to use that they, you can use a salad dressing put it in biscuits on top of um your ice uh, your um, ice cream really good on tofu when you're using it for tofu it's really good for a marinade if you need a marinade for tofu incredible I would highly recommend that. I, I've okay. just seen it. I'll look into it. Yes, maybe I'll send you one for Christmas. <laughs> well, have you ever used the balsamic vinegars? Yes. Uh, that we love the balsamic vinegars. And years ago, you sent us this incredible granola. Oh my goodness, that was oh, yeah, amazing. that was my homemade. Yeah, I just wish it wasn't so hard to make in the dehydrator. You know, um, I, no, I, I have a new flavor this year: carrot cake granola, and it's like well, it just well, you know, you dehydrator make doesn't make as much. I wish I could just send it to everyone, but I am going to send you two bottles of balsamic vinegar just for being on the show, and maybe you can pick one flavor, and Faith can pick one flavor. Oh, that would be so sweet. Um, yes, after you sent us their granola, we started making it all the time, but I have, since we moved, I haven't, haven't made it. And it is, it's a labor of love. It really is, <laughs> but I do enjoy it so much. So now Faithy has put the apples in the pie shell on the pie shell, the corningware dish. And now we're going to make the crumble. So how, what we have here is, um, 
medjool dates. That's my favorite date to use. I just love this date. You can use any type of date, but this is our favorite. We have to take the pit out. Please don't remember. You, have, you know, even if I say it's pitted, just check. You know, how many times I've ruined a recipe because there's been a date hiding in one of the dates. <laughs> I mean, a pit hiding a date. So <laughs> we're going to take a cup of the dates and we're going to put it in the food processor. Food processor is very handy in the kitchen. I would highly recommend adding it to your Christmas list if you don't have one. It saves so much time. So if it's adding the, a cup of um, pitted dates, that's good, honey, to the vitamins, I mean the vitamins, <laughs> to the food processor. There you go. And real, all I'm going to do is do a quick little spin on this just to, to incorporate the dates. Wait, I just get it until it gets to a little bit of a ball. That's all I do. And then I use just walnuts, organic walnuts. She's gonna put a cup in of walnuts. Kristen, there's a couple of questions on date crystals. Oh, yeah. And people are asking, is it the same as date sugar? And where do you get them? I've seen them at the store, but I don't know where everybody lives. Like oh, Susanna you know is asking how... in Canada. Oh, that's such a good question, Susanna. So I think where if you're in California, like you said, and you're in California, right, Chef AJ? Yeah, I'm, in, I'm so near Palm Springs, are? so it's not a problem getting anything. Yeah, well, I'm, <laughs> it depends on where you are. But where I get them is I have, I get them um, in a very large, I, everything I have is a large. <laughs> I get everything in bulk, but I buy these strict from California from um, Shields. Shields is, is Shields. like right up the street from me. Hello. Oh, hey, Wait, there you go. You're, aren't you guys going to be in my hood next year when you do the plant with the, you know, the, the, the yes. yes, we should go over there together. Yeah, yes. I think and, I, I think you can go on a tour there too. I would love that. Yes, yeah, so I get it from Shields and you can get, this is a five pound bucket. And so my girlfriend and I usually get 10 pounds because the more you get, less it'll be. And then we just, we just stunk, I'm um, sure the shipping, but it lasts a long time. And it's a lovely product. Okay, so she added the walnuts. You don't, that's optional. So if you want to keep the fat down in this recipe, you do not need to add the walnuts, just double up on your oats. So now I'm going to use um, this organic rolled oats and I'm going to put a cup in. So everything's just one cup, one cup of dates, one cup of, of um, oats and one cup of walnuts. And I'm going to chop this up real quick. Okay. And then I'm just going to add, so now I see everything I have is big. My mom always laughs at me. I've got a big thing of vanilla. <laughs> I know I, if I were to buy the little sizes that they sell, it would just go so fast in my family. So I'm going to add like a teaspoon of vanilla. This is really good vanilla. I would highly recommend if you're going to have vanilla, just to get a really good vanilla because it really makes such a difference when you're cooking. What, what brand are you using? I use vanilla powder, but I'm curious if you found a good extract you like. I do. I like Molina. I used to get this really good, good one and I can't remember what it's called right now from this lady in California and she would send it to me every year to get it by the gallon and I, I lost her I don't know what happened to her so I found this actually on um, Amazon but it's a Mexican vanilla it's very good oh, yeah Mexican vanilla is really good it's really good so I put that in there Let's get that that's it and you'll know when you have enough moisture if you can pick it up and it kind of creates a little ball. You can mush it together. You know, kind of, I don't know if anybody remembers when you would grow up and you'd make, cook like a crumble for a top of a pie, you could crumble it, right? And you can make a crumble. So that's exactly what we're looking for, that kind of texture. And all Faith's gonna do is now just take it and she crumbles it on top. Let's be fair. Does crumble, can you see what I'm doing? I might turn it down. There, there we go. go, there we go. And she's going to just watch the blade when you're doing this. Just take it out. And she's going to crumble and she's going to just put it all over. Now, again, this is going to be your desired um, 
um, texture, I, I mean, thickness, you can have it just a coating, you can put it really thick, it just depends on what you would like. We typically will just um, put enough to cover the apples. And again, we do not add a lot of sweetness to our apples because of the dates that are already in the crumble. We find that that's just enough sweetness. That's why you don't add any sugar or date, um, date sugar, um, or a lot of people will put syrup or whatever else in there. I don't think you need to have it any sweeter than what the dates are already providing in this um, through the date crystals and then the dates on top. So that's pretty much how we'll cover it up. And then we will put this in the oven at 350 and then we'll let it cook um, till, until, there we go, until it is bubbling and, and like a little brown on top and I actually made one already. So I have a small one so you can see it. But we're going to put this one in the oven because my family's going to go nuts if they've been seeing it. So this is our finished product. So it's a little brown on top. The apples are nice and soft. There's a little um, moisture. moisture on the bottom, but not enough that it's runny. And then what we typically do for our apple crisp, here, um, we do a couple of things. We will either use... Grab a few things here. Banana ice cream to go with it, or it, because and that that's not as fattening as it would be if I use coconut cream. Coconut cream is lovely as well. We'll, we'll use coconut cream um, sparingly, but I typically don't. We and then this happens when you start eating plant-based, you do not require as much sweetener in your things. And so we take the cream right out of the, out of our can. We keep it in the refrigerator. It, it, all the cream comes to the top. We'll just take it right off every once in a while. I'll put it in a blender if I'm making something special in order to whip it. So it has a really whipped, nice looking whip, uh, topping to it. But if not, we'll just honestly take right off and just put a little dollop right on top and we'll put our banana ice cream, which again is all it is, it, just bananas creamed in a Vitamix. No, bananas and water. A little bit of water, teeny bit of water. And then there is your apple crisp. I wish you could have a bite. It's so good, it's so delicious, and you can see the steam coming off. So wonderful and so tasty, and everybody seems to enjoy it, especially in our household. That looks amazing, and I love that you're, you know, don't use refined sugar. You don't need it. Dates can do everything sugar can do. Absolutely. And if I don't, I typically, I typically use dates um, for sweetening. I mean, you can use apricots and um, I remember Chef um, um, the Sarno brothers, Sarno brothers, I learned a lot from them and they would use a lot of different fruit. And, and that is, it's really fun when you can experiment with different fruit, dried fruit, but our favorite is dates. Yeah. And you, you use more like a, you, you use like almost look like a nine by 13 inch pan rather than like a, a pie plate. Yes. Yes. You're right. We do. Exactly. And, um, the other one that we make is really simple. It's just the, the blueberries is almost the exact same thing. I was going to show you, I have, so right now in Tennessee, we, we really don't have any fresh blueberries. Um, so it's kind of hard to, I love to cook in season. I don't know if you, Jeff A, do. I love to buy and cook seasonal food. Um, you know, in the holidays, sometimes it's hard because we have our favorite things we like, like apples and, and apple crisp and blueberries. But if, in season, I love to make fresh blueberry cobbler. It's nothing like going and picking your own blueberries and coming home and making a cobbler or, or Scott's favorite is blueberry pie. And so we, right, so right now what we do is I just get frozen, frozen blueberries, and then I defrost them overnight and um, that I drain them. That's really important. You're going to want to drain these blueberries or it's just going to be a mess. So we drain them and then um, all you're going to take is your blueberries and put them, try not, try to avoid getting the juice. Is there any juice on the bottom? And then fill it up to your liking. We like it nice and thick. So I'm putting in a really thick layer of blueberries. These blueberries, I actually just get at Costco. Um, they're so sweet that 
like again, I don't ever add anything to them. I don't so you, can get, you, get it. you have a Costco in Tennessee, but you can't get good Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm so sorry. I uh, hope you can still hear it. No, we can hear you blurry, great. Right? I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just teasing you, though. You know, <laughs> you know the Wi-Fi is horrible where we live. It is so bad. Now, Nashville, it's great, but we live way out in the country, and we have horrible, horrible internet. It's terrible. So my apologies. Um, so anyway, for blueberries, I never ask, I usually never add dates or date syrup or date crystals or anything like that to my dates. Cause I feel like they're just sweet enough, but I do add just a little bit of lemon. So I usually, I don't have a fresh lemon, but praise God, I had lemon juice. So, yeah. <laughs> so I had a little bit of lemon juice. And so I just add a little cap. I'm using a half a cap full and Faithy is going to add that to the to the um, blueberries and then she'll just mix it around. Adds a little bit of a little tart to the to the blueberries. I think it pulls out some of the um, sweetness as well. Adds a nice flavor to it. She's adding that. And while she's doing that, I'm going to add a really good three tablespoons of starch. Very generous tablespoons just because I find that blueberries <laughs> run a lot. Okay, she's going to mix that up. Do you like, do you make any, what, I, what are your favorite Christmas? Oh my God, uh, ginger snaps. That's what oh. I mean. I love them. I love them all year round, but especially at Christmas. I love ginger snaps. Oh, I know. You, do you have that in your cookbook? No, but it's, it's going to be on YouTube, uh, I guess tomorrow, uh, Wednesday. I put a new recipe up on Wednesday and it's really easy. It's basically just dates and oats. It's just. I'm going to try it. That yeah, sounds really good. I really love ginger snaps. I love your cookbooks. I'm always like, Scott, she cooks like us. It's just easy, simple, oh. easy, and repeatable. I just love, I love that healthy, cookbook. easy, healthy, and easy and repeatable. I love that. That should be the name of the cookbook. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. Oh, I love how your cookbook is spiral bound. Yes, I know. And that was the other thing. I loved using that printer because we can make it spiral bound. I'm quite sure if we could do that on Amazon, but we'll see what happens. Um, but yes, I appreciate you. I appreciate all that you do for the plant-based community. You're just a, such a blessing. Uh, um, okay. So you're welcome. Okay. We, we've got it all incorporated. Can you see we incorporated it? You can't really see the starch anymore. And now I already made the, co the topping ahead of time. And it's the exact same topping that we just used for apple crisp. And so all we're going to do is add it. Oh, actually I didn't. I didn't put vanilla in this one, but you can put vanilla. But I only reason is I didn't is because I forgot. <laughs> so you can, you you know, that's a fun thing about plant-based foods is it all just works, you know, <laughs> it doesn't matter. You can add, subtract. Um, okay, so, and then we have that and I usually put it a little thinner layer for my um, blueberry cobbler. And then that's it. That's what she looks like. That is, these are just such easy recipes. Yeah, they're really easy. You want to put that in the yes. oven? You like to use an Instant Pot, Kristen, or an air fryer? Oh, yes, I love to use my Instant Pot. I use it all the time when I'm making beans. Um, and again, since we have a larger family, we tend to um, buy in bulk. So I'll buy big amounts of beans. And so that's, it's just helpful for us to make a huge thing. I come in so often and my boys will make a, a bunch of beans and pot, and that's what they have for breakfast. They love to eat beans and salsa and rice and guacamole for breakfast. <laughs> How many are left at home? How many kids are left at home? We have five at home. You still and, have five at home. Well, then you're cooking a lot. Yeah. Yeah, we are. They do take, they, they know what they're doing now in the kitchen. So I typically just do uh, um, dinner and they do everything else. Which one's the best cook? other than you? You know, I say, now, Faith is excellent cook. She's, she's really good. Joy, our, my fifth, our 15 year old, she doesn't cook as much, but when she does cook, she it's, it's excellent. Um, so she's really good. So they're, they're tied honestly on, on cooking. And then Elijah, who is our 13 year old, he really has like a really good 
like he's so good at making things taste good. He can get all the spices out. And I usually will make something like the tofu. I'm like, Elijah, you, can you spice it up for me? And he gets them all the smoked paprika and the smoked cinnamon and he puts it all together and he makes just great flavors. And then um, Gabriel 19 and Samuel who's 16, they're not really into cooking. They're, <laughs> they're into eating, but not so much. Yeah, but they're into eating. Yeah, they're not into cooking, but they're into eating. Yeah, he'll make the, they'll make the beans, you know, and um, but they they won't really go in for it. Now, my daughter-in-law and my and my oldest son, they're really, they're both excellent. They love to cook. Dawson is the oldest, so he cooked all the time. And so he's always in the kitchen making something up. He loves to bake. So do, you, his- do, you, do you have a Breville air fryer or any air fryer? Yes, we have an air fryer. We do. And we love to use the air fryer. Faithy loves to use the air fryer with her when her friends come over. They'll make potatoes and yeah, they are sweet potato fries. That is so cool. Do you guys have any questions for Kristen or Faith? We'll see there. It takes a minute for that to uh, come up. Yeah. Do you guys have any pets? Oh, yes. We have two cats and three dogs. Wow, that's really great. And two fish. Yeah. Our (laughs) fish are right in the kitchen with us. (laughs) You have almost as many pets as you do kids. (laughs) (laughs) We do. We do. We love our we love our cats. They are just so special. Oh, Beverly. Do Do you have a water? Do you have the Berkey water filter? Yes, we do. Can she you says she it? sees it in the background and she'd yes. like to know how you use it. Do you like it? Because she's afraid of loading the filters. Oh, <laughs> I know what she's talking about because you have to prime them. Yes, I do use it. Well, since we moved to Tennessee, we have um, the water here isn't as good as where we came from. We had a beautiful artesian well when we moved in, in Pennsylvania. There's a lot of sulfur in the water here. So although we have house uh, filters, water filters, um, it just doesn't taste as good. So we run everything through our Berkey and yeah, it's fabulous. I would highly recommend it. Yes. I know what you mean by what my husband does that. You have to clean them out and you have to um, get the filters cleaned out like I don't know, every couple of months and then put them back in. I don't do that job because I, it is a messy job, but it is worth it. It really is. And that's the water I use like when I clean out my fish tank because it's so clean. Uh, but you'll like it. It's a nice flavor. Wow. Well, we have a Berkey and I didn't realize it needed cleaning because I don't do it. So I, I, <laughs> I, I hope my husband's been doing it. I, I mean, we got it as a gift and I sure hope that he knows that we have to change the filters and clean it every now and then. <laughs> yeah, it does help. Well, if it gets slow, if you notice that it's slowing down, then it needs to get cleaned out. Oh, cool. Hey, so Susanna, who's watching live, who also has a large family, I believe she has eight children. She says, any tips for converting a family of older kids, the ones that are still at home are 14, 16, 18, 21, 23, 25. And she recently learned about the health promoting aspects of a plant-based diet, but I guess not everybody wants to join up. Yeah, um, that's such a good question. And we hear that often, and especially when we do our health, <laughs> um, what happens is that we have usually the mom or the dad come or just the dad. And, and so they get so excited and they, you know, they're seeing their lives get transformed in one week and they want to go home and bring all this information to their family or actually just go in and just rip their kitchen apart and start and start a plant-based lifestyle. And what we need, what we usually encourage them is we say, you know, you've been here and you've been immersed and a lot of education and a lot of um, information, which your family hasn't, they haven't had the opportunity to hear all of this. So I think we've always, we're home educators. And so we've always had the mindset that we need to teach our children what we're learning. And so since they're, they, since they've been little and even currently, we will continue to teach them. We, we, we will show them documentaries. We will send them videos to watch. We will have articles that we'll share with them. We'll share with them the latest research. You know, and you just try to educate your family if they're interested. That's what I would do with our older children. Um, we just recently did that. We said, you know what? Let's watch Game Changers again. 
And we sat down just a week ago and we just watched it again. We're just continuing to learn and to grow and to mature uh, in these areas. So they have knowledge, which gives you power to make a decision. Um, like ultimately, it's their choice. Um, and you don't want to become a food Nazi in your own kitchen. It's just really difficult. But if you find that no one else wants to join you on the journey, you just do what you do for yourself. They will see what you're doing. They'll see the changes in your lifestyle. They might ask questions and you can share recipes. You want to make your recipes really tasty. You want to learn how to flavor them and spice them up and make kitchen cooking fun in the kitchen. And you will find that their families can become more and more interested. But I would encourage you to just educate them, help them to learn what you're learning. And from a fun point of view, not from um, a, like I would say, kitchen ninja, you don't want to come in there and just be combative with them and say, why are you eating that? Why are you doing that? So say, listen, well, this is what I'm learning. Would you like to read this article? It's so fascinating. There's a great movie called Game Changers. It's so exciting. Would you watch it with me? And try to invite them in on the journey. What if they say no? Can she, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. But see, but see, she still buys them unhealthy food, even though now she knows it's not good for them. Yeah, I know. And that's really difficult. I, I have a hard time. I am, I have a really hard time purchasing food that's not healthy for them. So, um, and I know it's hard because you don't want to fight the battle. I get, I understand what you're saying and they're used to certain things. So usually when I coach, um, the, I, I do some coaching with ladies and they're doing the same thing, trying to transition their kitchen. And I, for some reason, I, I get a lot of large families come to me for coaching. And again, I, what I usually encourage them to do is try to try to purge the pantry, kind of phase things out. Don't take everything away, but try to phase things out slowly and replace them with healthier food. And you must, must, must find some, at least five really good recipes and all your categories, your desserts, your entrees and your, um, and your breakfast, just find some go-tos that they're going to really enjoy that will pass their taste preferences. They're going to say, yes, I like this, make it again. And so have those, those recipes that you can share with your family and have, um, new things in your pantry that they could, um, um, gravitate towards instead of those old habits. It's going to take time and it's going to be hard at times, but it's so worth it. It really is worth it. The more you educate them, the more you provide good recipes, they will come along. Their tastes will change. But some of the half, uh, two thirds of the kids she mentioned, they're adults. So the younger one, at, but that, if, point, at that point, can't she just say no to them? Well, I find, you know, if they're adults and if they're not cooking for, if she's cooking for them, you know, um, they're, they're going to at some point be subject to what she's cooking, but if they're buying their own food, I mean, that's different. You know, if they want to have their own food, cook their own food and do their own thing, that's a little different, but the younger ones, you can definitely have more of an influence on them. Um, but if her, if her older children are still, um, eating the foods that she's preparing, then I would think she would have more of a say um, to what you're, what they're cooking. You know, that would, that be a conversation to have to say, this is what I'm going to be purchasing from now on. You know, if you don't want these foods, um, you know, you're going to have to choose to purchase them on your own. Well, she's very agreeable. If it was me, I would just make one meal. And if they wanted something else, let them go get it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, definitely when my children are little um, and we started this, I said, I'm not a restaurant, you know, I'm making one meal for our family. And I know it's hard because there's more of them there. I mean, it's very difficult. If you go to a restaurant for everybody's going to like the same res um, recipe, they're going to like the same entree. So if I can get six out of 10 to like what I make, I'm so thankful, but it's very rare that I can get everyone on the same page. And so we will adjust it with spices. I'll, you know, I'm okay. If I make something, they're like, you know what, I think it needs this. And they'll change it a little bit on their own plate, add some spices, take this out, add that in. And so, you know, it's important for allowing your family to adjust the recipe, but definitely I wouldn't encourage making three or four meals in one night. You'll be exhausted doing that. Absolutely. Alisa wants to know what you're having for your holiday meal. 
That's a really good question. So we were discussing this with my daughter-in-law. And so my daughter-in-law makes the most amazing veggie pot pie. And so we are making um, veggie pot pies for our, our main dish. And we're making a portobello mushroom side with roasted <laughs> vegetables. And we're making what we call smashed patooties, smashed potatoes <laughs> and gravy. And we're also going to make um, baked apples for dessert. That sounds delicious. Mm -hmm. It's really good. And my, my son usually makes the biscuits for on top of the pot pie. <laughs> right. So, so Susanna is saying the problem is her children are athletes and they think they need meat. And I, I suggested game changers, but your husband was an Olympic athlete and he doesn't need meat. No, game changers is excellent. And Scott is in game changers, our, my husband, and he's one of the um, doctors on there and he is an Olympian and he works with Olympians currently and um, a lot of athletes. And you'll see if your sons and your children can watch that, they will be amazed on what they can do on a plant-based diet as an athlete. So I would highly recommend watching that. And again, your sons and your children, they just don't know. And so they just need to be educated. Yeah, that's great. Well, people love your demeanor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, no, just do it, do it. Yeah. Hey, uh, Faith, what, Faith what, what did you ask Santa for this year? There's a question from Rachel. Oh, do you remember what you asked for? <laughs> What were some of the things on your list? Um, what that little popper thing? Mm -hmm. Drone. A drone. Mm hmm. She asked and for a drone. A teddy bear. And a teddy bear. Yep. Since Scott was an Olympic athlete, and I'm sure he still probably is very fit, did, did, did the whole family get bit by the bug? Do you guys like to work out a lot? Yes. Yes. We work out. We are a working out family. Absolutely. <laughs> so, do. so what do you, what do you guys do? Well, you know, um, so I, Scott and I love to do, um, we love to use weights. And so, um, I use beach body <laughs> called beach body and I use this called fit and, um, it's just like, it's like 30 to 40 minutes of, um, weightlifting and, and then hits where you're um, doing some explosive, um, uh, like 10 to 20 minutes of just explosive exercise. And he'll kind of just, he'll mix that up. Scott uses weights as well. We have a gym in our basement. And so he works out every day and then he does core and um, works up a really good sweat down there. I hear him all the time pumping the, <laughs> pumping the weights down there. I just use dumbbells and I have them in my room underneath my dresser. Um, but other sons as well, they'll run, they'll, they run, they run up and down the driveway of a really long lane. Um, we love to swim. Um, you know, we love to um, go for really long walks. When the weather was nice, we would go and try to walk about six miles a week. Wow. So yes, exercise is a part of our life. Definitely. Even, even Faith, do you exercise at all? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. what, what do you do? I usually walk down our driveway and then just walk up the big hill mm -hmm. and then run up it. That sounds like a long driveway. <laughs> it is about a quarter mile. So it is pretty long and yeah. steep. Do, do you take your dogs for a walk or do they just run? You have enough land. They just run around. Um, no, we take them for walks. That's great. That yeah. is she great. Mm -hmm. uh, Victoria says, what are your favorite spices? And do you have an opinion on organic spices versus non-organic spices? That's such a good question. Yes, I love spices. And yes, I do use organic spices. Um, and I find that they have more flavor. I And just the research that we have done, um, we just have found that you get, you get just get more um, nutrients when you use organic. And so I try to always create an organic kitchen as much as I can. And um, I love to use, I have smoked cinnamon. I love smoked things, smoked paprika. I love to use garlic powder and lots of different garlic. Um, I use fresh garlic all the time. Um, and um, I love to use, um, hold on, let me grab it. I can't remember what it's called. I've never heard of smoked cinnamon. I've heard of some, uh, that sounds amazing. I'm learning so many things from you. Apple, apple cider syrup, smoked cinnamon. 
Oh, yes. Okay, here we go. Here are some of them. Yes. Oh, yes. Smoked cinnamon is so good. You know, um, Chef Charity, she's on the Game Changers. I heard about that from her. So I did get that. And then these are really good spices, too. Um, oh, I don't have my glasses here. Oh, what is that? This gentleman. What is it? What does it say there? What ones? Well, there's, I don't know, it's on my glasses somewhere. Oh, I don't know where I put my glasses, but I'll put it, I'll, you know what I'll do? I'll text you. These, these are little recipes, these are the little spices that you can get. Um, and it has, he has so many different little flavors of spices. Um, I think he's going to get my glasses so I can see. I love to use turmeric. Um, I love to use curry. And I love to use this no salt organic um, seasoning that I find at Costco. This is excellent. Oh, thank you, Faithy. A lot of people okay. like that. I've heard uh, Mary McDougall talk about that as well. Oh, it's so good. Okay, this is kind of helping me may not. Wait, laboitinery.com, I think it's called. Wait. Oh my gosh, it's so small. I can hardly even read it. I'm going to have Faithy when she comes back tell me what it says. But he, this gentleman, he has a ton of different spices. You can go online and you can find so many different spices that he has. I got these on Amazon because we went to samples. Can you please tell me what that says? Do you know what that says? Is that Labo, 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 Labo Terry? Labo Terry? L A B. L O B. Labo Terry. Labo Terry. I think that's his name. Labo Terry. You can look that up. I'll have to get it to you to make sure. I'll send it to you. I'll email it to you. But he has a lot of different spices. So good. Um, what else? Yeah, I love to use curry, parsley, oregano. I use sure. oregano a lot. Um, fresh oregano. I love to use um, cilantro and parsley in my recipes. Um, yeah, I just, I go out. I just get all my spices out and I just, <laughs> basil. I love the basil. Yeah. Did you teach cooking classes ever or did you? You know what? I've never taught cooking classes. Although if you go onto YouTube, I have about, I think five or six on there that I've done with the children when they were younger. Nice. Uh, Susanna says, what type of plant milk do you use for your family? Well, I have a, um, a plant ba uh, plant based nutmeg milker. Do you have one of those where you make your I, own plant based? I have the one called the Nutra Milk. Which one do you have? Let me see. Hold on. Let me grab it. I have that one too, but I have another one because it's bigger. <laughs> it's bigger than the Nutra Milk. Wow. Yeah. Can you bring that one here, sweetheart? Bring it here. The whole thing. So I love to use cashews. I typically make cashew milk. Um, when we make milk, but this is the one I have, the Soya Joy. Look at this beast. Isn't it awesome? <laughs> it's so that's, big. That's neat. I, yeah, I love it. And I love it because I can, I, I pour it in, um, you know, just milk jugs and I put them in the fridge. And so they, I can make one every single day and there's enough in there for everybody. But I typically use cashews. Um, when I'm making the milk and only reason is really for convenience. They're soft. Um, they don't require as much. They're creamy. They taste good. I've used almonds before, but I have to soak them. And I, I, I don't and sometimes plan ahead to do that. I know what you mean. Uh, oh, Beverly says the vanilla you showed, what are the ingredients? Because sometimes she says vanilla has lots of additives. Oh my gosh. Let me see question this yeah you're right this does have some additives to it so we're gonna have pure vanilla extract this does have a caramel color to it and a potassium the natural vanilla yeah so this will have this one this isn't going to be as maybe as pure as you're going to want it so maybe that's why you use the powder they say pure, even if it isn't right. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do like the powder. Um, I just okay, but thank you for for sharing that. What's your favorite kitchen appliance? If like there was, if you had to run out of the house real quick, a Vitamix for sure. Nice. 
I use the Vitamix all day long. It's awesome. I would highly recommend a Vitamix. Mm -hmm. Well, you guys sound like a great family. I wish you lived closer because I'd come home right now and eat that cobbler. <laughs> and now you've got, so you're going to have a lot of cobbler. That's, <laughs> I'm sure it's going to get eaten. I mean, six kids. It's, it's, oh, that's yes. We'll have it tonight for sure. <laughs> yeah, it'd be fun to cook together. Oh, I'd love to cook together. Well, maybe when we're in California. What's Dr. Soul's favorite meal? Oh, Scott loves curry. He loves Thai food. He loves um, Indian food, but his favorite favorite is a curry. Wow, and he, well, loves he, he sure found a gem in you. <laughs> thank you. He's amazing. Oh, thank you. It's such a pleasure having you on. Nice to meet you, Faith. Come back another time and cook for us, okay? We will. And we just want to appreciate you. We, You're an amazing woman, and we just appreciate your testimony, um, how you've transformed your life, and how you've been so ch- just so willing to share it. And it's, it's really has transformed many people and has really helped people, you know, kind of break the chains of feeding disorders and um, learning that there's another way. So we just appreciate you and just thank you so much for what you do in the community. You are so kind. Thank you for that feedback. I really appreciate it. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. We will continue the week with many cooking demos showing you don't need sugar to make delicious desserts. And tomorrow we actually have two doctors who wrote a book called Sugar Proof, and they're going to be making chocolate squares and hot cocoa. I love that you don't give your kids sugar. Maybe you do. I don't know. I didn't ask you about how. No, no, we don't have sugar in the house. <laughs> and what do you get it on Halloween, Faith? Um, we use, what she usually will do is I'll say you can keep three, but, I have eight. <laughs> but she doesn't, she doesn't really like sugar. Like she'll get it, but she'll just have a bite and be done. That's do so that's awesome. Fun. You don't know, Faith, you don't know how lucky you are that you, you feel that way. Trust me. I know, right? A lot it's of people a- struggle with things like sugar and because mm-hmm. they got it too young and they got too much. And so that's mm-hmm. fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll meet the other ones sometimes. Oh, that would yes. be wonderful. Yes, they're amazing people. I bet they are. Well, we love the Stoll family. Thank you guys so much for the work you do. And have and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Chef AJ.